It's all about class and social movement power. What people are doing here is critical because only the power of ordinary people mobilized democratically has ever been able to use, and here I may differ with some anarchist comrades, but use the power of the democratic state to regulate corporate power, to improve the ability of workers to organize, and to re-equilibrate a society where concentrated corporate wealth dominates. We have a capitalist democracy. Let's hope it's still too democratic to just be capitalist, and that's something to talk about. But it's certainly too capitalist to be truly democratic, right? And the extent to which we have limited civil rights and civil liberties, we have to preserve and protect these, and also remember how even unevenly they're distributed. But the extent to which I can say this and not get carted off to prison is something that's very fragile, but we have to defend. Finally, though, I think, you know, and here, this isn't a criticism. I think, you know, the Occupy movement is an incredible sign of sort of outrage and inequality. But we have to really, you know, organize so that we do become truly the 99% in the sense that we have to make alliances, not be elitist or not say follow us or not march through neighborhoods that we may not fully represent with community organizations and community colors in communities of color. We have to make alliances with trade unions, with public sector workers who are being victimized all the time. And public sector workers, hint, is where the African American and Latino middle class is in this country, right? What the right is trying to say is, we've gutted unions in the private sector, so nobody has a pension, so now we're going after the teachers and the public sector workers, right? And they're trying to victimize them. And the public sector does incredibly important work. And this country is totally hypocritical about it, right? No child left behind, right? But we're going to degrade the teaching profession, we're going to attack teachers, so that no student who supposedly excels would ever want to be a teacher. What the fuck? I mean, no child left behind my ass. This system leads 90% of public school kids behind, but the top 10% who live in those ghetto suburbs, those enclosed communities of the affluent suburbs, they get great public educations. And they go to great public universities and great private universities. Finally, I just conclude, neoliberalism is not just about the suffering of people in the developing world, people in our inner cities, people in our declining working class. It's about the suffering of young people, even from middle class backgrounds, even young white middle class people. This is not just a struggle about them. It's a struggle for our all of our needs. Right? Just think about it. The real cost of college has doubled in the last 30 years. Nobody will tell you why, but hint, it's mostly because states have gotten out of the business of taxing people progressively and funding higher education. When I came to Temple, tuition was in today's dollars about 7,000, about 3,500 in 1988, and the state financed 50%, the state of Pennsylvania, 50% of Temple's costs. This year it's 17%. As we used to say in the Bronx, this shit didn't fall from the sky. Tuition's gone up because because Corbett and everybody else before, including Rendell, gives tax cuts to corporations, tax cuts to the rich, and defunds public goods, right? So the real cost of higher ed, even for state school kids, even for community college, has gone through the ceiling. How do people finance it? And this is the last thing. The only way that working people and poor people sustain their living standards somewhat over the last 30 years is by going tremendously in debt. And if you were a working class person and you owned your house, that was the only equity you had. And as Dylan says, when a bank asked for collateral, Dylan said he pulled down his pants. Most people showed the 20, 30, 40% equity they had in their houses, and they borrowed against it to send their kids to college, to, you know, repair their homes, whatever, and then the housing market collapsed. And last thing, one thing we have to add, in addition to talking about defending public sector worker rights, defending the right to unionize, defending progressive taxation, it, demanding the extension and expansion, not the cutting back, the expansion to universal health care, to good education for everyone. The last thing we have to say is we will not get out of this crisis until there's relief for the foreclosed, until there's relief for people whose homes are underwater. There's no way out of this crisis. During the Depression, it was more farmers than homeowners, not because Franklin Roosevelt was any radical, but as Obama once said, he said two things. The one thing I didn't say was that he said people, conservative white older men who sometimes vote conservative because neither party, and Obama should remember this, neither party really spoke to their knees. They clung to their guns and religion. That's what he said in Scranton, and he got skewed for it, and it's somewhat true, right? The other thing, the one other good thing he said was, you gotta force me to do it. If you want anything progressive, you gotta get in the streets. The reason why Franklin Roosevelt 
was, you know, implemented more progressive reforms wasn't because he was radical. He was a conservative corporate elite. But two things. One is he knew the bastards that he went to, you know, Groton with and Harvard with, right? He wasn't, he didn't worry about Wall Street because he came from Wall Street, right? So he was willing to say, fuck you. But he said, fuck you, because millions of homeless and unemployed people and foreclosed were running around in the streets, right? Douglas MacArthur became a famous, infamous general because he, he ordered troops to kill scores of people who were in Hooverville, camped out in 1931 like this, but on the right in front of the Congress, right? That's what we need. We need a new bonus army. Eventually, we have to move this whole operation to Washington, right? And just take over the Capitol and say, we're going to be here until there's relief for the foreclosed as one crucial demand. Because people who are trying to hold on to their houses, A, they're working their bone off if they can get a job. They're working two or three jobs. They can't mobilize, whatever. We need to demand that the banks take a hit. They speculated on all the shit. They dug up these loans and sliced and diced them. Talk about one of the things we face in this country. The last thing is Roosevelt was pressured from below, but at least there was sort of a corporate elite that was nationally based. Capitalists have no national loyalty. Karl Marx said in 1848, it was maybe a little premature, but it's certainly true. One of the big problems in this country is, Francis Fox Piven talks about this all the time, it's not clear there's a national ruling class anymore that gives a fuck about America. I'm not arguing for nationalism, but until we say that elites have no right to govern unless they respond to the people, this is not a democracy. But ultimately it'll only become a democracy if the demos, if we the people force the government to act to benefit all of us. So I'd say we have to organize, we have to expand this out, we have to understand that there is a class war going on in this country, but it's a corporate class war, and only working people, poor people, people of all races and nationalities, only if united can we reverse neoliberalism by instituting progressive taxation, universal public health care, high quality public goods for everyone, labor rights, and a state that regulates finance capital so it doesn't try to make money out of speculation, but invest in real productive needs. Ultimately, this is the final conclusion. Do we want, no, this really is the final <laughs> Do we want human beings to serve the needs of the economy or the economy to serve the needs of the people? That's what's at stake in Occupy Wall Street and Occupy Philadelphia. And